Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Tuesday, November 17th, 2009 meeting of the Glendale Redevelopment Agency. Mr. City Clerk, could you please call the roll? Agency members, Friedman, Najarian. Here. Quintero. Here. Weaver. Here. Chairman Draymond. Here. And Mr. Kasakian, could we hear your report, please? The agenda for the November 17, 2009 regular meeting of the Glendale Redevelopment Agency was posted on Thursday, November 12, 2009 on the bulletin board outside City Hall. Thank you. And our first item? First item is uh, approval of minutes. So moved. Second. Okay. Our minutes will stand approved as submitted. Our next item. Uh, next item is oral communication. Discussion is limited to items not part of this agenda. Each speaker is allowed five minutes. Members of the redevelopment agency may question or respond to the speaker, but there will be no debate or decision, and the matter may be referred to staff through the executive director for investigation and report. All right. Thank you very much. Our first speaker is Mike Mohill. Going once, going twice, gone. Okay. Our second speaker is Mr. Milano. Herbert Milano. Uh, good afternoon, uh, members of the Redevelopment Agency, Redevelopment Agency Chair, and City Staff. My name is Herbert Molano. About three weeks ago, uh, the uh, Redevelopment Agency, in a joint meeting with the City Council, uh, approved uh, the, I believe, the development of two buildings on California and Central. Uh, one of the salient uh, comments that was made, I, I listened to, was that uh, there would be a focus on some type of lead compliance for this building. At least that's what I heard uh, Councilman Friedman say at the time. And for a long time, um, as I've been looking at the numbers from uh, with regard to the issues that lead compliance deals with, uh, the sustainability issues of electricity and water among, among them, I was wondering whether these um, condominium or, or multifamily units will have single metering. The reason why I bring that up is that as you are moving towards creating a smart grid and as the downtown specific plan is going to essentially eventually bring thousands of additional residential units, I was wondering if the objective of the city is to have single metering for water and electricity uh, especially for water for for these units. Um, I have been doing some research on submetering because I'm having a lot of difficulty controlling the water use at my building. And uh, in a recent assistance that I received from Glendale Water and Power through a, another outside entity to evaluate all of the individual apartments, talk to uh, the, the tenants, installed uh, low flow uh, shower heads and so forth. When I got my bill, my bill was 20% higher <laughs> than before. And, uh, and I began to look at the actual usage and try to make a calculation, and it came out to around 200 gallons per day per unit, a little bit under that. And so it looks to me as my alternative is to partner, maybe get a service that provides submittering. And according to the vendors who provide these services, submittering, when it, when it, provides for a 20 to 40 percent reduction in water use. So my thinking is, is that if we are going to have eventually a program for smart metering, is this individual metering for water at these units already mandated as standard policy for the city? So that's my question. I hope you have the time to perhaps answer an inquiry question with regard to that. It is my uh, belief that when residents know in an effective way, what the usage is for water, for electricity on a continual basis, they'll reduce because they know what is taking up the electricity or what's taking up their, their usage. If we don't get informed until two months later or we never get informed as tenants 
who basically have no uh, financial vested interest in the water conservation, except my th verbal threat. I was wondering if there is a, uh, maybe a way of looking at this problem in a much more cohesive way. Um, I'm primarily addressing the multifamily issue because over 60% of the residents in England are multifamily. And if we are able to move towards individual metering, we empower the, the tenants or the condominium dweller to take on their own control of those expenses and their usage. Anyway, that's my question. I appreciate an answer. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Milano. Um, I'm sorry. I didn't quite get what the pointing was. Nothing. Oh, okay. I didn't know whether you were trying to direct my attention to someone in particular. Oh, no, or... no. Okay. Um, let's see if we can get an answer for that. I know it would be easier in the evening when we have all of our water and power people here and, and so on. But let's see. Uh, metering uh, requirements, um, et cetera. Anybody that can address that. How about you, Mr. Can, City Attorney? Uh, Mr. Jame, I can't answer for sure, but my, my understanding is that the GWP typically does require individual metering on for, for, new for new developments. For new developments. Of course, the prospect of right. going retroactive is yeah. tremendously costly. Yeah. Yeah. But I understand for new developments, individual metering is required. And I might add, Mr. Chair, Mr. Milano just made, again, an argument for smart metering throughout, which one of its long-term benefits is it provides people with immediate information about their usage of both electricity and water. This has been a, uh, a continuing theme that uh, Mr. Milano has been talking about, and of course it is one that, that this city is looking at, and of course we've been able to get some of the, for example, the, um, the affordable project that ADI is working on. Uh, voluntarily to uh, move to smart metering. Uh, the, the, the benefits, I, I don't think there's any question about the benefits, uh, not just to the, say, an apartment owner, but also, obviously, to the, the individual residents. Um, they can gauge their own use, and it, it is a very effective tool. And, you're, and I think Mr. Milano is quite right. When you do have, as we are billing cycle here in Glendale, that's every two months, there you lose the connection between the... Uh, the time when you're actually using the water and when the bill bill comes around. So anyway, um, Mr. Quintero. I assume nothing precludes a property owner from uh, doing the work themselves, right? Of course not. No, no, no just the cost. Okay. Um, our next item, Mr. Uh, City Clerk. Any agency member or staff comments or new business? Uh, yes, Mr. Lanzafan. Mr. Chairman, uh, a few weeks ago you had referred uh, a few businesses to us for business assistance. Uh, I'm pleased to report that we have made contact to or in the Kenneth Village area uh, that want to add restaurant or, or other uh, uh, entertainment use. Uh, and one is at 425 North Brand in issue with signs. We've made contact with all three. Um, we are waiting in Kenneth Village, uh, would be great additions, we think. Uh, we are waiting for them to finalize their plans uh, and then, uh, depending on how how much space they will actually occupy, uh, they may be able to uh, move in uh, with our existing code. Otherwise, we'll help them through the process uh, to make that happen. Uh, with the sign issue, we've also made contact with that building owner and talked to them about alternatives for signage uh, to his building. Uh, so we will keep you apprised of how those go along uh, and I hope invite you to a grand opening one day uh, for at least the two businesses in Kenneth Village. Well, thank you, Mr. Lansfame. I appreciate you following up on those. Uh, uh, sometimes there's the, there's the sense that, uh, uh, well, we have a great idea for our space in a smaller a neighborhood business district, but the city just won't allow us to do anything. And, of course, that's not the case. But sometimes that extra personal touch really makes the difference. So I greatly appreciate you and your staff taking the time to follow up on that. Are there any comments? There are none. Is there a motion? Second. Second. Adjourn. We're adjourned. Thank you.